Welcome to Fayette County Public Library Storytime. Our first story today is Tyrannosaurus Dad. Do you think it would be fun to have a Tyrannosaurus Dad? Let's see what happens in this story. Tobias and his father were a lot like all the other families whose children went to Elmwood Elementary. Tobias liked to play ball. He raised tropical fish. And early in the morning before school and on weekends, he delivered newspapers on his bicycle. Now that doesn't look like fun. He's in the rain trying to deliver newspapers. His father had some things in common with the other fathers. He collected big books of corny jokes. He liked to try his hand at magic. He was a big guy, a meat eater. Worked hard. But there the resemblance ended. Tobias's father had teeth as sharp as steak knives. At 40 feet long and 15 feet high, he weighed as much as a steam locomotive, even when he watched what he ate. He was, in short, a Tyrannosaurus. You might have thought nothing would bother him, but strangers irritated him half to death. So when the elderly meter reader hobbled by, Tyrannosaurus Dad laid low. <laughs> and when traveling salesmen came to call, he roared at them to go away and stay away. The next time I see you better be never. He didn't have to ask twice. And mostly, Tobias understood. Good night, boy-o, his father would call through the bedroom window. Night, Dad, Tobias would answer. Hmm. It's a different way. With Tyrannosaurus Dad around, he never felt afraid of spiders or strange noises at night. Still, he couldn't help wishing his father would be, well... A little more part of things. His dad was always, always working. So when the Elmwood Elementary Field Day was, day was announced, Tobias dropped a lot of hints. He taped Field Day posters to the bathroom mirror. He leafleted the lawn with field day flyers. He even sung the Wellwood Elementary School anthem around the house over and over and over. Oh, Elmwood School, we love you so. You are the best school we know. Tyrannosaurus Dad acted too busy to notice. He hid behind a pile of paperwork. Look at all that paperwork. And so, the very morning of the Elmwood Field Day, Tobias put his baseball cap on backwards for luck. Well, he announced, today is the day. His father rustled the pages of the sports section. <laughs> he mumbled. Fun! Excitement! Free food, Tobias read from the announcement that had been sent home to all the families. See, his father grunted, busy day ahead. Tobias gave up. He rose slowly from the kitchen table and shuffled away. He doesn't look very happy, does he? Well, he said, I'll see you after school, I guess. Not if I see you first, joked Tyrannosaurus Dad. Look at all the pancakes that his dad's going to eat. <laughs> but
But the Elmwood Field Day events were just getting started when something awful happened. The Chicken Bone Gang rode in. They were the toughest kids in town and terrified the kindergartners and first graders. They tied tin cans and old aluminum pie plates to the spokes of their beaten up bikes. They made a terrible racket when they skidded onto the field, kicking up dust. Who's the ump? They demanded. We want to play. This was a sore point because, in fact, the regular umpire had just come down with the flu. I am, said Principal Antos, looking uneasy. No way, snarled the leader. No fair. Home cooking, scoffed another. He'll be the ump, and they pushed one of their own gang forward. Forget it said Tobias. He glared at the leader of the chicken bone gang, and the leader glared back. They both stood their ground, arms folded. I'll up, thundered an unexpected voice. The kids had to look up to see where the voice was coming from. Way, way up. Tyrannosaurus Dad divided up the teams. Half the chicken bone gang on one team, half on the other. The kids of all, all the kids looked confused. What do we do now? They asked. Play ball, said Tyrannosaurus Dad. No one could accuse Tyrannosaurus Dad of playing favorites. He called the third strike on Tobias, his own kid. And he tossed one of the chicken bone gang out of the game for unsportsmanlike behavior. Look how, look how he got tossed out of the game. <laughs> First one team was ahead, then the other. At the bottom of the ninth, the score was tied 10 to 10. All of a sudden, storm clouds rolled in. Fat, warm raindrops began to fall. Lightning cracked nearby. This game is called on account of rain, Tyrannosaurus Dad declared. Some of the kids groaned. A few of the parents booed, but quickly pretended. They'd just been coughing. <laughs> Our field day picnic is ruined, moaned Principal and Antos. All those hot dogs and hamburgers gone to waste. She looked like she might cry. But Tyrannosaurus Dad provided enough shelter for several tables to be pushed together underneath him. He was a good sport about the smoke from the barbecue grill, too. And, of course, he ate more hamburgers than anyone. Probably more than all of them put together. <laughs> the rain stopped just as it was growing dark. Tyrannosaurus Dad waited till the last Late buses had pulled in. Then he gave Tobias a little nudge. Anybody else need a ride? Tobias said. He didn't have to ask twice. The chicken bone gang let out a cheer. They rode their rusty bikes noisily onto the back of Tyrannosaurus Dad, who grinned. He still had ketchup on his mouth. <laughs> Tobias squinted at his dad. What made you come today? He asked. Family first, Tyrannosaurus dad said. Work can wait. He pulled a worn photograph out of his pocket. It showed them playing ball together. Tobias looked much shorter and younger. I always carry this, he said. You need me. I'm here for you. Tobias smiled and rubbed his father's head. 
Thanks, Dad, he murmured. Tyrannosaurus Dad nodded, his mouth full of hamburger again. Umph. So I think that Tobias had a good dad. What do you think? <laughs> dad saved the day. All right, Miss Lisa, what do you have for us? All right, so boys and girls, today we're talking about dads. And I have in my hand a bunch of little pictures of some hats that a dad might wear for his job. So let's go through these and see if you can guess which type of uh, occupation your dad might have if he would wear one of these hats. So here's the first one. And if you can read, it will show you right there. That's our policeman hat. Some of your dads may be policemen. Here's another hat. Do you know who wears that hat? That would be a ball player. Yeah. Some of our dads might not play professionally, but I'm sure they love to play with you in the yard or maybe just play some league ball in the summer. All right, what about this one? This one sort of looks like that one up there, but it says pilot. So those are our airline pilots who fly our airplanes for us. All right, take a look at this hat. Who wears a yellow hard hat? That probably gave it away, didn't it? That's for construction workers. Here's another ball hat. More of a helmet, isn't it? Who wears that helmet? That's our football players. That's right. Check out this hat. On it, it says Al's Market. Anybody know a meat cutter? We need those in our grocery stores. All right, here's another one that's blue. <laughs> the U.S. Mail. Our mailmen are very important. It's one of my favorite things to do when I'm at home is to run to the mailbox to go get the mail. That's my favorite thing to do in the afternoons after work. All right, here's a big hat. This is one of the biggest on the whole bunch here. That's a cowboy hat. So I don't know if any of our dads are cowboys, but I bet they have hats that they wear when they go out and do some fun things in the yard. Here's another white hat with a red cross on it. You might recognize that as a nurse's hat. Now, nurses can be boys, so your dad may be a nurse. Now we have two more. Let's go over here with this hat. That's a red one. That's our fireman's hat. I'm sure you guessed that one already. And our last one is a big white poofy hat. And that would be a baker's hat. We need people who bake our breads and our muffins, don't we? Now, we are going to match. In my lap here, I have a whole bunch of pictures of the things that these men would use on their job. So here's the chance for you all to play at home along here, play with me, and try to figure out what job goes with these different items. All right, here's the first item. Hmm, can you see what that is? That is a stethoscope. So would the mailman use that, or a cowboy, or a nurse? Meat market? Oh, you told me the nurse does. Yeah, you're right. The nurses and the doctors, they use this to listen to our hearts, don't they? All right. What about this? You guys see what that is? That's sort of a dead giveaway. Inside of that bag, it's a rolly bag. You would see this in the downtown office, not probably the people that come to your house. But there's all those letters. So that goes with, where is it? The mailman. Yep, you are right. Oh, here's an easy one. Here's our football. Where's our football player helmet? Right here. There we go. We're matching them up pretty well today. Okay, what about this? You guys see what that is? That's a big hose, isn't it? It's not the garden hose. A big, heavy hose for the firemen to use. So we'll just match that up right there. Here's another ball. There's the baseball. 
So I think that goes right here with the baseball player. All right. What about this? Hammer. Bang, 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 bang. Who's going to use the hammer, boys and girls? We got a few things left. It would be the chef, the policeman, the construction worker, the pilot, the uh, meat market man, or the cowboy. Mm, I think you're right. I heard you all tell me it was the construction worker. He needs his helmet, doesn't he? All right. Take a look at this object. This says north, south, east and west on it. So we call this a compass. It helps us know what direction we're going. So who needs to know what direction they're going? Okay, what's left? We have a cowboy. Does he need to know? Hmm. What about the meat market man, the pilot, the police, or the bakery? Baker. Hmm. I think it best goes with the pilot. You sure wouldn't want to end up in California if you were going to Disney World. Well, I guess you go to Disneyland. You wouldn't want to end up in Wyoming or someplace crazy. You need to use your compass. Okay, let's look at this one. Here we go with handcuffs. All right, who uses the handcuffs? You're right, the police do. We have two more, three more it looks like. What about the stirring spoon? Mm, stir up some muffins or some casserole, some noodles, macaroni and cheese. Oh, sounds good. I'm hungry. I think that goes with our baker. Look at this. This is, you guys see that? It's a rope. Or maybe we can call it the lasso. I'm going to stick that over here with cowboy hat. So there's one left, the meat market man. What do you think I have over here that he uses? What do you have to use to get meat ready to go on the grocery shelf? Hmm, anybody have an idea? Well, if you said knife, you were right. So these are some jobs that our dads might have and the things that they would use when they go to their work. All right, so we have another really cool book and this one's called how to surprise a dad. You might think it's hard to surprise him, huh? Because they seem to know everything. So let's see what these two boys and girls do to help with their dad. In the front here, we have a lot of little notes that they've made. We'll see how that works in the story. How to surprise a dad. Shh. To surprise your dad. You have to be tricky. First of all, don't let him see this book. <laughs> so you need to know how to hide your book. Wrap it in paper and cover it with pictures. That way he'll never know it's about him. See what they're doing? Tuck it in between some boring books that no one reads. Hey, where's the polka dotted hippo book? <clears throat> wink, wink. Looks like Mama sort of knows the secret. Make a secret name for your book like Polka Dotted Hippo. Be sure to wink whenever you say it. You may be really good at surprises, but do you want to be a super dad surpriser? Great. Luckily, any day is a perfect day to surprise a dad, and there are so many different ways to do it. Some surprises you can just make. Draw hearts and hide them everywhere. Look at all those hearts. You could build a snow dad. Or you could invent something amazing just for him. They created a time machine. You think that's going to take dad back in time? Probably he's wishing he was back in time when his kids weren't there. <laughs> oh, some other surprises are things you can do. Look, you could get your toothbrush ready for him. You could reorganize his shoes and his hats. You could help him with the grocery shopping. I'm putting all kinds of yummy chocolate stuff in the basket. And if you want to make him laugh, walk and talk just like dad. Some surprises you don't make or do, but instead you find them. So how do you find a surprise? Look up, look down, look under, and all around. 
stay perfectly still, and listen. Dig a hole, sift through sand, or kick up leaves. Kids have good eyes for nature, dads not so much. So surprise him when you find a caterpillar nibbling a leaf or a squirrel hiding in a tree. Dandelions for a bouquet or a heart-shaped rock. A busy, busy ant hill or geese flying up above. Now that you're an expert on any day surprises, you're ready for a special day surprise. Take these um, a little bit more planning, and if your mom's a good at secrets, ask her to help you. So some special days for dads would be a welcome home, Father's Day, his birthday, or a congratulations. First, you have to choose what the big surprise would be and decide who to invite. Your family, your pen, your friends, your pets, <coughs> some relatives, a stuffed animal, your friend or your neighbor. Then decorate with his favorite color, keep it simple, or just go wild. Remember to save some ideas for the next time. Now plan the yummiest part of that surprise, the treats. You can create a dessert that looks just like your dad. Bake cookies with extra chocolate chips. It's your dad's special day, so be sure you have his favorite. Spicy chips and smoked oysters and super stinky cheese. <laughs> I don't know if that would be your dad's favorite or not. Now don't forget the presents. Now some presents that you might make for dad would be a shirt and a tie. Now instead of wrapping these, wear them for even a bigger surprise. Everything you need to make paper airplanes or make a secret treasure map of your yard. Make some coupons. That's always a fun thing for dad. Play catch with until dad is tired. Get up early one morning for a fishing trip. This is a read the book, dad's choice. A coupon that says, I will cheerfully clean my room. <laughs> That's a good one. Also, you might want to check any day surprises that you make or do or find. And if your dad gets suspicious and asks you, hey, is something going on here? You just need to look innocent. Practice this in a mirror. Say something like, behind you. It's very boring right now. Oh, you shouldn't turn around. Now think fast and distract him with a crazy dance. Look at mama, she's trying to help, huh? And when it's surprise time, make sure everyone is hiding. Now, how do you hide everyone? Well, between the pictures and the plants and the balloons, behind the curtains, the couch and the coat rack, you can hide under the table or under the cushions or under the blankets. And while you wait for your dad, you need to practice whispering, surprise. Okay now, shh, surprise. <laughs> Remember, of all the surprises, the best ones are the special ones that you dream up just for your dad. Now, don't forget to hide this book and shh, you don't want to let your dad read it. Um, have him say this pledge out loud before he starts, if you want your dad to read this book. It says, I, dad, promise not to remember anything in this book, especially the thing about surprises. So this was a great How to Surprise Your Dad book. Miss Kim, what else do you have for us today? Well, I think we have one more story. This is a little princess story. I want my dad. The little princess was proud of her dad, the king. He was taller than all the other dads except when the other dad stood up. Then the little princess became a bit jealous. <laughs> the cook was taller than the little princess's dad, especially with his hat on, and he baked his son the most wonderful cakes. Even the dog would not eat the famous burned black cakes that her dad baked. Those don't look very good, do they? <clears throat> the general taught his son to ride a pony. 
But whenever her dad went near animals, even her mouse, they made him sneeze. Well, that's kind of hard to be around animals then. The admiral taught his daughter to swim. I think that's an interesting way to try to help someone learn to swim. <laughs> but the king needed water wings in the bath. He never swam. He just sank like a stone. That's pretty bad if you can't even take a bath without drowning. <laughs> The gardener took his twins on adventure walks in the forest. Looks like they're talking to these rabbits. Look at this rabbit over here with his tongue stuck out at them. <laughs> the king got lost on his way to the bed. He better not go to a forest then. I wish my dad was as much fun as the other dads. The little princess wailed to the maid. I wish he could teach me to ride and cook and swim and take me on adventure walks. He's useless. Ooh, that's a terrible thing to say about your dad. I can teach you all of those things, said the maid. So the maid taught her to trot on her pony, but the little princess fell off and bumped her head. Hmm. Then the maid showed her how to make a cake. But the little princess's cake was so hard, it hurt her teeth. Then the maid taught her how to swim. But the little princess swallowed lots of horrible water. She's spitting out fish and frogs and everything. Yuck. I don't think Little Prince is doing much better than her dad here. What do you think? Then the maid took her for an adventure walk in the woods. But the Little Princess got them lost. So they missed their tea. That sounds familiar. She got lost just like her dad. The Little Princess felt cold. She felt wet. Her teeth hurt. Her head bump hurt. And she was very, very hungry. She also felt that she couldn't do anything properly. In fact, she felt quite miserable. Just then the, then the king walked by with the dog. Hmm. I want my dad, the little princess squealed, rushing up to him. Dad, I'm useless. What can you mean, said the king, hugging his daughter. When I heard about you doing all those exciting things, I felt so proud. I wonder if the little princess learned a lesson in our story today. She thought her dad, the king, was useless because he couldn't do those things. But when she had trouble doing those things, her dad said, I was just so proud. Never feel bad when you have trouble doing something because you'll learn eventually and you'll make someone proud just because you tried. Well, that's our story time for today. We hope you enjoyed it. Have a wonderful afternoon. Bye-bye.